Meniere's disease, SCD342 by Lexi Turner, Jordi Boberg, and Rosie Satina. What is Meniere's disease? This is typically an inner ear disorder and it typically only affects one ear and the hearing loss tends to fluctuate and be hard of hearing. Pressure canal, tinnitus, and vertigo. The etiology, the exact cause is unknown. It could be due to excessive fluid buildup in the inner ear. This buildup can be caused by allergies, a cold or virus, ear infections, family history, head injuries, migraines, or pressure changes. Triggers. You should limit your salt intake, canned food, processed foods, anchovies, olives, pickles, sauerkraut, vegetable juices, most cheeses, bottles, salad dressing, snack foods, caffeine, alcohol, and tobacco. The prevalence. About 600,000 to 750,000 cases in the United States and then 45,000 to 60,000 new cases diagnosed annually. This impacts 12 in 1,000 people. Characteristics to look out for. Difficulty following verbal directions, difficulty with oral expressions, with some difficulties with social, emotional, or interpersonal skills. They will often have a de degree of language delay, often follow and rarely re leads, will usually exhibit some form of articulation difficulty can be become easily frustrated if their needs are not met, which may end to some behavioral difficulties. Sometimes the use of hearing aids leads to embarrassment or fear of rejection from Peterson. From peers. Risk to language delay. With vertigo, sometimes that means the room could look like it's spinning, which means when our students are reading, their letters could look like they're moving. For this reason, it is important that we work on letter and word identification. With deafness aspects, our students can fall behind with language. ASL is often our students' first language when they are deaf. This means English is their second. For our DHH students, they are exposed to less language because they do not hear the side conversations that hearing peers are constantly hearing. Our DHH students also need explicit instruction. Delay in learning for DHH. Doctors often push away the use of ASL and tell their parents not to use it. <coughs> this means our DHH students are delayed access to visual language. Around 18 weeks gestation, our babies can hear sounds from the womb. This means our DHH kids are born and hopefully identified. They are already 18 weeks behind in language. With treating ASL as multiple, treating ASL as a separate language from English, often we need to directly draw parallels to English and speech to help them learn language. Professionals that need to be involved will help to help foster language will be discussed later. Delay in language in the home environment. At home, make sure you use the child's preferred language. LSL, ASL, C, cute speech, total, com total communication, etc. Put the ASL gloss next to English text in books your child reads over and over. Use language as often as possible. Brushing your teeth, explain it. Going to the store, narrate it. Don't know a sign, look it up together. If your child is learning sign, then so are you. If your child is reading lips, then so are you. Practice with your child, create a good relationship foundation so if they are struggling, they will come to you and ask for help. Total communication and language. Total communication is philosophy of educating children with hearing loss that incorporates all means of communication, formal signs, natural gestures, finger spelling, body language, listening, lip reading, and speech. Children in the TC programs typically wear hearing aids or cochlear implants. The goal is to optimize language development in whatever way is most effective for the individual child. Social aspects. Embarrassment, students may not wear the FM system or hearing aids, students may be embarrassed from having a vertigo episode. Um, advocating for themselves, they could be too shy to inform other students or teachers they are not feeling well and cannot hear them. Feelings of isolation, from being the only person with an interpreter or feeling different from everyone else. And resentment towards peers, students may be able to unparticipate may be able to un to part on may be able 
may be unable to participate in certain activities or sports due to the vertigo or consistent migraine occurring and any other peers that are able to participate. Meet the team. In our child's team of people, they need to have the parent, the student themselves, the LBS coordinator, deaf ed coordinator, an interpreter and transcriber, speech language pathologist or SLPs, English language learner teacher, ELL, reading specialist, occupational therapist, physical therapist, general doctor, audiologist, ENT and therapist or social worker. This means our student needs a lot of support in a lot of different areas. Suggestions for the classroom. So for a minimal to mild hearing loss, our students are typically wearing a hearing aid, they have FM systems, and they probably maybe sit in the front. They may not need to depending on how their hearing loss works. For a mild 26 to 40 decibel hearing loss, they definitely have hearing aids, personal FM systems, and they most likely need the favorable seating. For a moderate hearing loss, 41 to 55 decibels, they must wear their amplification. And in a special ed setting, they are probably being pulled out a lot for these deaf ed services. For a 56 to 70 decibel hearing loss, again, amplification is essential. They absolutely need a resource teacher and they may or may not be in a deaf education classroom most of the day. For a severe to profound hearing loss, 71 decibels or greater, or 71 decibels to 90, and a profound hearing loss is 91 decibels or greater. Um, F emphasis is placed on auditory language skills, speech reading, concept development, and speech, because we know they are missing a big chunk of that. So we often explicitly teach this. And they most likely use a total communication support because we want to get the most amount of communication in them as possible. They may need a special program and you may have heard of Illinois School for the Deaf, ISD. Oftentimes our students with a profound hearing loss are in a residential program. Suggestions for the classroom. Layout. So some suggestions for the classroom and layout. Um, cots or mats, because when the students have a vertigo spell, they could get really dizzy and need to lie down. Um, foam floors and, or soft floors. Um, this would be if they were to fall down, at least it's soft landing. But if you use carpets, they need to be secured to the ground. Exercise intolerance may cause, may lead to like the need of elimination of PE. Arrange for quiet places for them to lay down in. Breaking down big assignments into smaller parts is also helpful. Being mindful of moving and lighted decorations and allow technology for your students. Some suggestions for the teacher would be to demonstrate flexibility and respecting the student's perspective. Remember that the student is still normal just dealing with an abnormal situation. Some alternative plans for drills such as um, flashing lights could cause dizziness um, loud noises, may, uh, they may not hear them if they are profoundly deaf, and they could also cause migraine. Um, avoid quickly moving or unsteady videos. This could um, trigger their vertigo to be triggered. Um, be mindful of moving through presentation slides too quickly and the use of transitions and animation, which is the same thing as the moving too quickly. Use closed captions for um, deaf and hard of hearing students. Learn to work with an interpreter if one is present. Be aware of your spatial awareness and don't stand in front of the interpreter, talk to the student, not the interpreter. Um, hold pointer on objects longer than normal to switch the attention of the student and talk with the students on how to use the interpreter as well. And give notes ahead of time for them to review. Some technology in the classroom are the student's hearing aids, an FM system, which would allow the amplification of sounds from the source to receiver personal FM systems, which amplifies the sounds directly to the student's hearing aid. Sound systems amplify the sounds for the entire classroom and a transcription program using a, a transcriber or FM system to have real-time notes for everything said in class. Okay, explicit instruction 
from English to ASL. This way we can draw the direct line between American Sign Language and English and we have a better understanding for our students of how to use English. So first up we have cued speech, then phonetics, and then grammar graphics. So cued speech is a system of hand shapes, placements, and mouth morphemes. Hand shapes combined with mouth morphemes represent consonants. The placement of the hand shape represents the vowel sound attached to the consonant. This way, our students can visually see sound on the hands. For phonetics and speech, we often use phonetics to explain how English works. For example, the t sound relates to the letter T. In the photo, it shows the mouth formation of the letter T and has tactile cues to produce the sound. The tactile cues include touch behind the teeth with finger and feel for bumpy part, then touch tongue to same place. The image explains the letter T is a front, quiet, short, voiceless sound. It then has practice words, tomato, toilet, taco, turtle, and table. For the letter D, it makes a D sound. This is a front, loud, short, voiced sound. The tactile cue, Clues are as follows. Touch behind teeth with finger and feel for bumpy part, then touch the tongue to same place. Tap upper lip with index finger. The practice words are duck, diamond, dog, donut, and door. When we teach how to use phonetic sounds and how they may conflict with the graphemes or the letters, here's an example. Graphing, stopped. The phonetic ending, ed, the grapheme ending ed correlates with the phonetic sound t in stopped, but the grapheme for closed, the ed, the same grapheme, the phonetic sound is actually the d sound, closed d. Both end with an ed grapheme, but phonetically are pronounced differently. For grammar graphics, this is a grammar graphics curriculum, a visual graphics cur curriculum. This curriculum creates a visual representation of English. It takes common symbols that are easy to draw and relates each directly to an article of speech. For example, a filled in red circle indicates a verb and a circle outlined in red is a state of being verb. Next, we have our three websites with explanations. The first one is Setting Language in Motion. This is a set of video modules created by the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Program of Boston Children's Hospital and Lawrence Clark National Deaf Center, and it is used to foster an understanding of the importance of early language acquisition. The next one is by Tommy Tobin. It is about Meniere's disease in the ADA. While this one doesn't directly talk about language, we can use the information to base our instruction around how their, disability, how their disability is more hidden and they will need extra support when it's not obvious. And the last one is deaf students in a mainstream classroom guide. Meniere's disease in many students is not what, will not get them qualified for special education classroom. This website is a quick guide for some basic ideas to di for different accommodations that would be helpful for the student within a mainstream classroom. Some of these accommodations could include um, slowing down conversations and class discussions, pointing or naming the speaker before they start talking, and repeating what they said so the student can hear. Them. 